Newton's second law, F equals ma. There's friction in the problem. We want to calculate the tension that exists in the strings that connect these objects. So let's get started. We're, we have three objects on a horizontal table. Three kilograms, four kilograms, five kilograms. Uh, there's static uh, friction and there's kinetic friction. So I'll just put these up here. Coefficient of static friction, 0 0.3. Coefficient of kinetic friction, 0 0.2. There's string connecting each object. We go over a frictionless pulley here, and we come up to a 9 kilogram um, object here. And our first question, will the system move? We have 9 kilograms here that are pulling downward. This 9 kilogram times 9.81 will create a downward force here. I'll put that 9.81 meters per second squared, the acceleration due to gravity. And up here, wow, well, we've got five, another four will make nine, another three would be 12. So it looks like we've got 12 kilograms opposing nine kilograms, but that's not correct. We have to deal with forces. The nine kilograms has nine times g, 9.81. That's going to be a force uh, in this downward direction, and that turns out to be 88.29 newtons. But up here, you do not use three kilograms times 9.81 to find the force that resists the motion. Instead, you have to use friction. There's going to be a force of friction. There's be friction for each of these objects. I'm not going to clutter up the diagram right now to uh, put separate arrows, but there is friction here, there's friction here, there's friction here. The system is tending to move on the horizontal table off to the right, so friction will be back to the left. Friction, the direction of the force of friction is such to oppose motion. And which... Um, coefficient should we use? We know basically that the force of friction is equal to the coefficient times the normal force. Well, if we we'd start the system at rest and we're trying to decide if it's going to move, we're going to use the static coefficient of friction. The system is not moving just yet. We're trying to see if it will move. So we use the static um, coefficient of friction. And I'll use the equal sign to get the maximum amount of static friction force. Static friction is a variable force. There's only as much as needed. Um, we need a lot here, so we're going to go ahead and use the equal sign and get the maximum uh, static friction force. So we've decided to use the point three. What do I use for the normal force? Well, each of these objects, there's mg going downward. In this case, it would be 5 times 9.81. The uh, Normal force is from the table acting back up on the object perpendicular to the surface, and it's going to match the mg. This object is not accelerating up or down. These two forces match each other and add to zero, giving us zero acceleration in the vertical direction. And that happens for each of these objects. The normal force just opposes mg. So that's how we'll get the normal force. So let's see what we have here. The static coefficient of friction, 0 0.3. And just to simplify the work a little bit, uh, this should be 0.3 times 3 kilograms times 9.81 plus 0.3 times 4 kilograms times 9.81 plus 0.3 times 5 kilograms times 9.81. Let's just simplify things a little bit and add all the masses here. Um, sort of factoring out the 9.81, that this is normal force. And if you multiply this out, you'll find that this is 35.32 newtons. This force is larger. The system will move. The system will move. OK, our next question, it's moving. What's the acceleration? After it starts to move, what's the acceleration? Well, now we need to use F equals MA, where the F is the net external force in the direction of motion. The mass is the total mass that's moving, and our acceleration value. So this pulley here redirects this 88.29 uh, newton. So it's as if 
we have 88.29 newtons going off to the right. And I'm going to call this direction the positive direction. You do need to keep track of plus and minus signs and directions when you work force problems. So let's figure out the net external force. So if I say I have a positive 88.29 newtons, the friction force is back to the left. That will act in the negative direction. Should I use 35.32 newtons? No, this is the static friction force. And now that we're moving, we must switch to the kinetic friction and use 0.2 to calculate the force of friction. There's not as much friction force available when things are moving. The kinetic coefficient is smaller than the static coefficient. So I, I use the kinetic coefficient of friction. Again, I'm going to add up all the masses. So this is giving us the normal force, each of them times the 0.2. And then that completes our net external force in the direction of motion. The mg and the fn, they're not in the direction of motion, so I don't include them in the, in the problem. Also, if I, I go ahead and label tension 1 here, tension 2, tension 3 in the string, and tension 4, these forces are internal to our system, so I do not include them here. Uh, they're not external forces. They're inside the system of these four objects. I don't include them. I do not include the force between each molecule inside the objects. Um, there are lots of forces here. We don't have, fortunately, do not have to uh, uh, worry about calculating with. Okay, over here now we're supposed to have the total mass times the unknown acceleration. How much mass is accelerating? We've got 9 kilograms. 5 kilograms, 4 kilograms, 3 kilograms. I must use the total mass of the system. And so 9 and 5 and 4, that'll be 18. And then another 3 is 21. So I have 21 kilograms. And then the unknown acceleration. So we work on this side first, 88.29. The friction force, the kinetic coefficient or kinetic friction available, is 23.54. And now I subtract these two numbers. I divide by 21, and I come up with 3.08 meters per second squared. We use standard metric units all the way along here: newtons, kilograms, meters per second squared. So I get meters per second squared for the acceleration. This system, the three objects on the, on the uh, table will accelerate to the right at 3.08 meters per second squared. The 9 kilogram object will accelerate downward at 3.08 meters per second squared. Why doesn't it fall at an acceleration of 9.81 meters per second squared? This 9 kilogram object will not be uh, accelerating downward at 9.81. Well, it's got some carry on here, some dead weight to uh, to pull across the table, and consequently, it's not free falling by itself. It's uh, falling a slower than 9.81 meters per second squared. So this number is reasonable. It's reasonable. Now let's calculate the tension in each string. Let's calculate the tension in each string. And now I'm going to kind of subdivide this problem and focus on a smaller element first on the nine kilogram object. So the 9 kilogram object, just put 9 there, there's this tension 1 going upward and 88.29 newtons downward. And we know its acceleration is uh, 3.08 meters per second squared. This is now my system of interest. I ignore the other boxes, the other objects on the table. I ignore the friction that's up there. I'm just focused in on the forces that act on the 9 kilogram object. So if we do F equals MA for this, I'm going to let upward be the positive direction. That's my tendency in working problems. So this acceleration will actually be a negative number. Upward things are going to be positive. Well, the T1 is upward. The 88.29 is downward. Those are the only two fo external forces in the system. So that's my net external force. How much mass is accelerating in my system now? It's just 9 kilograms. 
And what's the value of the acceleration? Is 3.08 correct? And you should say no, it's minus 3.08. You must put in the correct uh, plus or minus sign on the acceleration. I chose upward to be positive, so this acceleration is a negative. And T1, I have to add 88.29 to both sides. I multiply 9 times the minus 308, that's you know, roughly minus 27.72, and very roughly. The net is 60.57 newtons. Is that a reasonable answer? Yes, it's smaller than the weight of the object, so gravity is winning, this object is descending, and um, it's reasonable that T1 is smaller than the 88.29 newtons, the, uh, the weight of the 9 kilogram object. What about T2? Do I even have to work the, do a calculation to find T2? No, I don't. This is a string that, massless string that's connecting the two objects. The tension along the string everywhere is 60.57 in this problem. So you don't have to actually have to work it, but I will work it. And what I'm going to do is use the, uh, the three objects on the table. So if I consider those, the three kilograms, the four kilograms, the five kilograms, there's T2 pulling off to the right. And again, I'll let this be the positive direction. We've got friction, kinetic friction, back to the left. So our net force calculation here would be T2 off to the right. We're trying to find that minus the value of the kinetic force of friction. We've already calculated that, 23.54 newtons. How much mass is moving in my system here? Well, my system is all three objects that are on the horizontal table. Um, and I don't have to consider the tension in the strings connecting in between the objects. That's internal force. T2 is external to my system here, the 3, 4, and 5 kilogram objects. So I only use external forces when I write the net force. Well, how much mass? 5 and 4 is 9. 3 is 12 kilograms. What's the acceleration? Plus 3.08 meters per second squared. The system is accelerating off to the right. I chose plus for the T2. The acceleration is that same direction. So if you work this out, you get T2, and I got 60.5 newtons rounding off. So essentially the same. This 3.08 is not an exact number. So these numbers will not be in perfect agreement because this, there are more digits out here that I didn't uh, keep track of for the acceleration. Let's move on to the tension <coughs> in between the 5 and the 4 kilogram object. So now I use a different system, just two objects just the three and the four kilogram objects. And we're interested in finding the value of T3, but in a very similar way. Um, I have T3 acting to the right. I do have to recalculate the force of friction because we only have two parts of the system now. So 0.2 for the coefficient of friction, three kilograms plus four kilograms times 9.81. That's going to be our normal force equals, we've got 7 kilograms, and again we have plus 3.08 for the uh, acceleration. So that's our F equals MA calculation. So 3 plus 4 is 7, multiply by the 0.2, multiply by the 9.81, get that value, add that to both sides, and then additionally add on 7 times the uh, 3.08. So the T3 is 13.73 plus 21.56. The tension T3 is 35.29. Is that reasonable? Yeah, it's smaller than 60.5. This tension has to accelerate 7 kilograms. This tension has to accelerate 12 kilograms. So it's reasonable that T3 is smaller than T2. And now our last one, T4. What's our system of interest for T4? T4 is right here. It's the tension in the string connecting the 3 and the 4 kilogram object. Well, the easiest one to choose is the 3 kilogram object. So the 3 kilograms, you've got T4 here. 
all of these have friction, kinetic friction. And you should be able to get this started. T4 minus the friction is calculated with the um, 0.2, again times the normal force, 9.81, and the 3 kilograms. How much mass is moving? 3 kilograms in this system. And again, plus 3.08 meters per second squared for the acceleration. So calculate the friction value, add that to both sides, and compute 3 times 3.08, add those together. And what you find is 15.13 newtons. Is that a reasonable number? Yeah, it's smaller than the 35. This force only is responsible for accelerating 3 kilograms. This force has to accelerate 7 kilograms. So there we are with uh, F equals MA and a problem that involves friction. Again, the starting uh, motion will occur. The motion will start. It so starts from rest. The force that's uh, created by the weight of the 9 kilogram object <coughs> opposes is opposed by friction. There's not enough static friction available uh, to uh, to stop this system. Uh, if we would uh, you know, triple the masses up here, then there would be lots of static friction force available. It would be beyond 88.29 available. Um, it would not be above that. The system would not start moving to the left. Friction never starts motion. Uh, but for this problem, there was not enough static friction available, so the system did start to move. When it starts to move, we must switch to kinetic uh, coefficient of friction. We use the total mass that's moving. We only use external forces that act on our system of the 9, the 5, the 4, and the 3 kilogram objects. Once we have those accelerations, now to find individual tension values, we subdivided our problem first choosing the 9 kilogram as the object of interest, then the 543, then the 43, and then the 3. And we came up with our individual tension numbers. We looked at them to see if they make sense. They do. They're getting smaller as the mass to be accelerated is smaller. Keep practicing. Ask your instructor some questions.